Welcome back to VWG. We have Giselle Corinthios, who used to be on TVO Kids, who's also a writer and a producer. Hi, I guess, I, can I call you G? Because I'm a G. Yeah, sure, sure, G. sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm a G as well. Hi, yeah. Graham. Hello. Yeah. I never thought of that, to be honest. G to G. <laughs> okay, so what was your favorite TVO Kids show when you were part of it? If part of it, if you remember it, Andy. Okay, so um, uh, well, I was on TVO Kids for 18 years, of course, during that time, there were so many different shows that aired um, on the channel. And so, you know, there are some that really stood out to me. One in particular is Arthur. I just love the show because of the characters and the relationships and just that they went into areas, just different subject matters that other shows didn't. And so I always really enjoyed Arthur. Plus it was very funny. Yeah. And yeah, and other shows I would say um, there was Pingu. Do you remember that? The Penguin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was a silent on camera show and it was awesome very funny show and uh then there were more like peep in the big wide world was always a favorite of mine mm -hmm. and um i liked high five i really liked their music oh, yeah. and i worked with them uh, a couple of times which was really awesome they were they were really great to work with and yeah let's say those are some of my favorites that i can remember i'm sure there are many more i just you know top of my head uh, those are the ones that I'd say I that stand out. Yeah, I've watched a lot of those shows. They're all memorable. Did you have a favorite yourself? Um, I don't even know, to be honest. I might come back. We'll see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so recently, you've been doing something on YouTube called the, the, the Giselle Mishmash. How did you come up with that? Okay, so when Giselle's Big Backyard... Um, stopped production in 2016, I was receiving a lot of messages on LinkedIn from parents. And I guess they reached out to me on LinkedIn because I wasn't on any other form of social media. And they would tell me that they really missed me on TVO and, uh, and their kids missed me. And so that they started to watch me on YouTube. And so I was actually really surprised at the time. I thought, wow, you know, Giselle's Big Backyard, it, like how many, how many episodes are on YouTube? I didn't think there was very much out there. Anyway, there are clips of, uh, from Giselle's Big Backyard on there um, and uh, not a ton, but they, the ones that are there have a lot of views. So I realized that, wow, you know, people are actually looking for me on YouTube. So that stuck in my mind. And I guess that planted the seed early on. And then a while later, I just, I started to miss what I do when that's perform yeah. and produce content for kids. I missed Giselle's Big Backyard. And uh, yeah, and then I just thought, well, wait a second, I could produce content and perform on this free, uh, platform called YouTube. So I decided to launch my own preschool variety show. And to do so, you know, I had to take a course, <laughs> watched a lot of YouTube videos to learn how to do YouTube. And then I bought my equipment and my props. And I borrowed a lot of props from my neighbors who, if I was missing, you know, when I say props, I mean toys, really, <laughs> because it's a preschool show. And uh, then I was gathering costumes to create characters. And so um, either I borrowed something from my husband <laughs> or my kids, like a wig, like my kids had some Halloween wigs. And then I went to thrift shops to buy other costumes. Value Village was a real blessing for me. And then, yeah, I had a massive to-do list and I slowly started to tick it off. And uh, then at the start of COVID, I launched my preschool YouTube channel and I called it the Giselle Mishmash because I, it's just a mishmash of different 
um, content. It's a variety show. And it's actually just recently, be re it's, it's, well, recently I decided to rename the show. That's another story that I can't get into, but basically um, it's now called the Giselle Mashup. So um, it's actually transitioning to being called the Giselle Mashup. Anyway, so that's the story on how I started my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty interesting story. And I'm sure that's going to inspire a lot of people as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's I'm actually, been a lot. You know what I should add there that, you know, just the other day, I decided to put my content from um, the Giselle Mishmash slash the Giselle Mashup on TikTok. So I've just started a very separate TikTok just for kids called the Giselle Mashup. So all of my YouTube content is now being reformatted, which is a lot of work because, you know, on, on YouTube, you shoot um, in uh, landscape form, yeah. but then on TikTok, it's all portraits. So anyway, I'm doing my best with, um, reformatting my videos to fit TikTok. So that's kind of fun because there are a lot of parents who um, grew up watching me. They have kids of their own now, but you know, they were once little and watch me on uh, TV and now they're on TikTok. And so I'm finding this audience of parents um, who will show my um, or I'm hoping <laughs> will show and some of them tell me they are because I just launched it the other day and they're showing my uh, TikTok for tots on their on their phones that's pretty cool yeah <laughs> okay you ready for the next question yes i am <laughs> yes so i am Graham. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> okay i don't know what i'm doing yeah. okay <laughs> so throughout the giselle's big backyard there's been puppets that include sticks jay melvin uh, that and this. I think one was a puppet and one was a live action human. I, I can't remember. Yeah, who. this uh, on. OK, so there was a segment on Giselle's Big Backyard in later years. And uh, there was Ryan Field, who was um, who played this in a shop called the This and That Shop. Mm -hmm. So Ryan was the human TVO kids host from the afternoon show, The Space. And then um, there was a puppet called Vat, who was his uh, co-shop owner of this, this and that shop. And so uh, that was played by um, the puppeteer, Frank Meshkalite. Yeah, I've heard of him. Too yeah. and being new. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's worked on a lot of shows and he's yeah. amazing. He's amazing. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. So out of those or any other ones I didn't mention, which one is your favorite puppet? My favorite puppet. Character. Yeah. OK, so um, I guess on the show, Sticks always held a very special place in my heart because he was the first puppet, uh, my first co-host, my first uh, puppet friend. And, uh, you know, we were besties on the show and we shared a lot of feelings you know a lot of laughter but also a lot of feelings so we were the closest as characters together so as you know on the show he was definitely i'd say the closest character to giselle and giselle's big backyard and um aside from that i loved working with frank mishkalite because um <laughs> we just I was just always laughing on set. He's just a very funny person. And so we, yeah, we just had a lot of laughs on set. And I call Frank, we have this like ongoing joke because I call him um, a national treasure. And the reason I call him a national treasure is because one day we were on set between takes. And so we're always chatting when, you know, the camera and the lights are being set up. And so, um, so yeah, so then um, I'm being distracted by two wasps next to me because I'm outside, but I'm not even gonna touch them. Anyway, so yeah, so one day we're on set and um, uh, he was trying to show me something technical on his iPhone. 
And he pulls up this email to use as an example to show me what he was doing. I don't remember what technical thing he was showing me at the time, but he pulls up this email and then he reads it to me and it starts off by saying, Frank, you're a national treasure. And then I just burst out into laughter and I was like, wait a second, you're telling me that the email that you pull up on your iPhone is one that starts off with, Frank, you're a national treasure. Anyway, he didn't even realize that that's what he was reading. And we just laughed and laughed. And anyway, ever since then, we always talk about him being a national treasure. And he is a national treasure. Yeah, if you're watching, Frank, you are a national treasure. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh one second. Okay, it's not. <laughs> Hold on. <What>? <laughs> Pets. Oh, okay, was that, did you see it? It was like a hornet. It wasn't two wasps stuck together. It was like, um, a, it's okay. I'll probably, I'll probably see it after I finish. It's gone. It. Okay, sorry. Okay. No, no, all's good. So you've been on TVO for many, many years. What's your favorite memory about, or what favorite memory about being on TVO? You know, that's actually a very easy question to answer oh. because, um, you know, is just always meeting the kids oh. in person, really, truthfully. Like you, you would, you know, just anytime that I'd meet them either at a meet and greet, you know, we'd do or a stage show or, um, or just in my public daily life. Um, to this day, I'm, I'm so lucky. I, you know, now that I've removed my mask during the pandemic, it was a little different, but anyway, when I'm out in public on the streets and stuff. Um, yeah, I have conversations with either parents or kids who are now parents or kids who are, I mean, there's so many different ages. I was on there for so long. There's so many different generations, but meeting the fans, especially the kids that grew up with me when they were little now, it's just like the best feeling. It's so heartwarming. And uh, yeah, I mean, there are times I'd be so happy to meet them you know, back at meet and greets and stage shows or in public when they were little. Um, and sometimes I'd even get very emotional, um, you know, just some of the stuff they would say or parents would say. It was just really, that was just the best, just so special. And and, and now, and, and, and that's why I'm on, I'm on social media now. I wasn't for a long time, but finding my audience that were with me then and finding them now and hearing what they have to say, I swear I still get moved to tears often because, uh, you know, I just, they tell share so much is shared that they share so many beautiful things and um, also heartbreaking uh, stuff, you know, um, with me about how, you know, sometimes they say some, some people who grew up with watching me would say, you know, that, that our show was, just like the safest place for them if they came from a tumultuous household and anyway so yeah so it's still very moving for me um to meet the audience yeah i totally understand that before i say goodbye we're both wearing tropical shirts i see <laughs> yes we are <laughs> <laughs> you've got to appreciate the weather when we can wear these nice tropical shirts right yeah. <laughs> yeah well thank you for taking the time to chat with me giselle oh you're so welcome 